In this problem, you're asked to draw the most stable conformation of cis-1-isopropyl-4-methyl-cyclohexane. So this is going to require that you draw chair conformations. And that's one way to do it. And once I draw that ring, it's my choice as to which is the number one carbon and which is number four. I'll just start over here on the left. Let that be the number one carbon. And that will make this one the number four. Now it's important that I draw the bonds extending from these two carbons in the correct fashion. At carbon one, there will be an axial up position and an equatorial down. And at carbon four, there will necessarily be a axial down and equatorial up position. So since I've decided to put my number one carbon on the left, that's where this isopropyl group goes. And I can choose to put it at either location at carbon one. If I point it up like I do here, then that means there's just a hydrogen at the other position. Because this is cis, that forces me now to put my methyl group also above the ring in an up position. In this case, it's going to be equatorial. Now, that's not a bad confirmation, but we can do better because the isopropyl group is a larger group than methyl, so it's going to prefer to have an equatorial arrangement. And so I can make that happen by showing this ring uh, do the flipping. And you want to be able to draw both versions of a cyclohexane ring anyway. So if that ring flips, it will look like this. And my number one carbon will now be at this location. And the number four will still be at the other side of the ring. What that does, though, is change the orientation of the bonds coming off of these carbons. Now at the number one carbon, we have an equatorial up and axial down position. And at number four, we have an axial up and equatorial down. That has the effect now of putting this isopropyl group in a preferred equatorial ar arrangement. And at the same time, it causes the methyl group to adopt an axial arrangement. And so this would be a more stable conformation because it puts the less bulky group in the axial position. The more bulky isopropyl group over here on the number one carbon uh, is at an equatorial position. Now, there are other ways to draw the most stable isomer besides uh, the one I just did. I can go back to my original chair arrangement here. And even if I leave the carbons labeled in the same fashion, I can realize that knowing that the isopropyl group prefers to be equatorial, I can still put it in an equatorial position at the number one carbon by just choosing to put it down here. And if I do that, that's going to tell me to put the methyl group also at a down position so that it will still be cis to the isopropyl group. As long as they're either both up or both down, it's still cis. And they're both still located at the same carbons, number one and four. But if I chose to draw it like I just did here, uh, well, that's equivalent to my flipped ring, and it wouldn't require me to have to redraw it. So uh, 